Good morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Ruth Privey. We're at West Jefferson United Methodist Church in Ohio. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome to you as well. A couple of announcements. Next uh, Saturday morning is our community breakfast uh, by our men's group from 8 to 10, so please come and enjoy a yummy breakfast. And then uh, the next week uh, on Sunday, right after worship, is our feast on the 5th. Every fifth time we have a fifth Sunday, we uh, have a, a potluck, so we call it Feast on the 5th, and we ask everybody to bring something to share, and, and uh, we have fun and fellowship while um, having lunch right after worship. Also, for those of you who are on our leadership uh, team, uh, that's next Monday the 23rd, so write that in your calendars. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Please rise and join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, you call us by name and claim us as your people as we start fresh and new at the beginning of the year. Renew us in your love by the water of our baptism. Claim us anew through the mighty power of your great spirit. We pray that in this service, and in all that we do, we may bless your holy name and give you the glory for all things. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now our praise team will come. Good morning, everybody. So happy to see you. We're going to start off worship this morning with Down to the River to Pray. Seems fitting. I don't know if you can hear this rushing river behind us, <laughs> but it's real loud up here. <laughs> All right, Down to the River to Pray. Story crown. 
the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. You may be seated. Today, our message comes from Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands, waiting for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth I tell you of them. As we come to our prayer time, I would remind you there are prayer cards or prayer slips in the pew, the little blue slips. You can put those in the offering plate as it goes by. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can send them to our office at that uh, email address that's listed here. So let us go to the Lord. Oh, Lord God, we give you thanks this day. For the sunshine that beams through these windows, that even though it's cold outside, the beam and the light of your love warms us inside. As we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus this day, we are reminded of our own baptisms, the day that you claimed us for your own that you have made us brothers and sisters, joint heirs with Jesus. And so we give you thanks and praise for that day and for all the days to come. There are so many, Lord, that need your help, that need your healing. We list them within our hearts and our minds because, Lord, you're already there. You are already taking care of business, so to speak. We know, Lord, that you have already touched those who need your healing, whether it's in relationships or in physical bodies. But we continue to lift our families and our neighbors and our friends to you. And, Lord, we lift our world to you the violence that is rampant across our country and our city and indeed the world, Lord. You are a Lord of peace. You're the God of comfort, and we pray for your comfort and your peace in our world. We pray for our military folks as they stand in harm's way for us to protect us and, and others. For our first responders as they rescue people and pull them from raging waters in California. And for all of us, Lord, who want to hear your voice, who want to hear you say to us, you are my beloved, help us, Lord, open our hearts this day that we might hear that voice within us. 
We give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. you please stand for the reading of the gospel? Our reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be, now, let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, down south, they tell about one old Baptist minister who preached every Sunday on baptism by immersion. The folks agreed with his doctrine, but they were tired of hearing the same old subject dealt with every single week. The deacons undertook to solve this problem through diplomatic means. They complimented him on his 
pulpit skills and suggested to him that he was a natural preacher and they wanted to try an experiment. So they handed him a piece of paper with a scripture lesson on it just before he stepped into the pulpit. They said, we believe that you are so good that you can preach a great sermon with no preparation at all. Just that slip of paper. What preacher could resist an approach like that? This preacher. <laughs> so the deacons got busy searching the scriptures over and over for a text which was totally unrelated to baptism by immersion. And they selected the opening verses of Genesis where it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and there was absolutely nothing in that text that had to do with baptism. And they handed the text to the old preacher, and he read it aloud three times, and finally he turned to the congregation. He said, well, if I remember my geography right, the earth is one-fourth land and three-fourths water, which brings me to the subject for the day, <laughs> baptism. <laughs> Broad hints don't work with some people. But meanwhile, down at the Methodist Church, a group of fourth graders were studying infant baptism, and their Sunday school teacher asked why they, use why they use water for baptism. And one youngster said, hey, it's just to make the baby's hair grow. <laughs> and over in the Catholic Church, a little girl watched quietly and intently as the priest baptized her little brother. And when the ceremony was about over, he was pouring the water, the little girl became nervous. And she edged up to the baptismal font, and she wa said, wash behind his ears too, Father. <laughs> and then there's the last line of invitation by that old Baptist preacher. Come on in, the water's fine. I love that. Every time we celebrate and someone is baptized, that is the invitation from God. Come on in, the water's fine. And every time we have one of those moments where in our lives are renewed through a fresh outpouring of God's spirit upon us. That's the invitation from God to come on in. The water's fine. For those who have already been baptized, it's an invitation to remember and to be renewed. And for those who have yet to be baptized, it's an invitation to take the plunge, to come on in. The water's fine. It's an invitation from God. So this morning we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, remembering that day long ago when he was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Jesus was one of, of a multitude of people from all over who were making their way out into the wilderness to hear John. And John's message was simple, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So Jesus left his home in Nazareth and traveled out to the wilderness to be baptized by John. Now, Jesus was different from all the other people who listened to John's message. Jesus was not baptized because he was caught up in the excitement of John's preaching, nor was he baptized because he needed his sins washed away. That's always a question. Why did Jesus need to be baptized anyway? When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, he identified with us. He wanted us to know that he was wanting to be as much like us so that we could be so much more like him. He claimed us, he named us, and then he aimed us in the right direction. That's the answer to that puzzling question about why Jesus, who was the son of God, who was supposed to be without sin, and who actually was without sin, would need to be baptized by John. So clearly, Jesus didn't have to have his sins forgiven, and neither was he overwhelmed by John's preaching. As wonderful as John's preaching probably was, he said, I need to be baptized by you. And Jesus, though he wanted to know what it was like to be baptized by John, he wanted to see the same thing that others saw when they came up out of the water. So it's easier for us to identify with someone who has experienced the same things that we have. There's a lot of a common bond with someone who knows what we feel. That's why we have so many like support groups of like us. We may not hear the words that God spoke to Jesus. I think my ears are, are uneven. That's why this thing keeps falling off of me. <laughs> we might not hear the words that God spoke to Jesus. But God is always pleased when someone comes. 
God is always pleased when we come to the water. So part of the reason that God is pleased is because in baptism we discover that baptism claims us, names us, and aims us. So baptism claims us because baptism is about what we believe. And we believe that there are second chances in life. That ours is over like the kids say. It's, it's a do-over. And scripture confirms that our God is a God of second chances. French writer Henry Barbusse tells of a conversation over here in a trench full of wounded men during the First World War. One of the men who, know, who knew he had only minutes to live says to one of the other men, listen, Dominic, you kind of led a bad life. Everywhere you are wanted by the police, but there are no convictions against me. My name is clear, so here, take my wallet, take my papers, take my identity, take my good name, my life, and quickly hand me your papers that I might carry all of your crimes away with me in death. And the good news is that that's what Jesus did. God makes a similar offer. Something wonderful happens to us when we're baptized. When we're baptized, we identify ourselves with Jesus. We publicly declare our intention to strive to be like Jesus and to follow God's will for our lives. When we're baptized, our lives are changed and we see things differently than we did before. We see other people differently than we did. Baptism enables and empowers us to do the things that Jesus wants us to do here and now. And we are able to love as he loved, even as we renew our baptism each time. Each time we see a baptism, we renew our own baptism so that we again see life in a new and different way. And we're just able to love as Jesus loved. That's our goal. Such identification can be life-changing. That kind of identification shapes what we believe, and it claims us. And then baptism names us and tells us who we are. It tells us whose we are. The ticket in a sports radio show refers to useless people as spares. When I first heard it, it seemed a little bit funny. But in reflecting on that, I realized that we need to remember that in the kingdom of God, there are no spares. There are no useless people. There are no extras, no outsiders. Each and every one of us is a child of God. God loves us as if we were the only child that God has. Baptism reminds us of that, that every time someone answers the invitation to come on in, the water's fine, that we hear the voice of God saying, this is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. Now, wouldn't it be great if many, many times a day somebody heard God say to them, good job, you are my child, you are my beloved, and I am well pleased with you. Think of the difference it would make in our world if many times a day somebody felt encouraged by God. I always thought that it was curious that we call the container or the water for baptism a a baptismal font. Our baptismal font really comes from the word font or short for fountain. But I got to thinking about that word and the use of the word font and baptism is God's watermark on our lives. The font is God's signature. The ink of that signature is water, the water of our baptism, the water that washes us clean, the water into which we are received, the water that was sprinkled on our hearts to make us clean, the water that was poured out upon us, the Holy Spirit. As a consequence, we are carriers of God's message of redemption and second chances in the world, We're God's walking signboards, carrying God's message for all to see and all to hear. We are God's PR people. The font of baptism is used to write who we are for all to see and hear. It's written on our hearts. It's God's autograph, and it says we are a child of God. We are a designer original. Author and teacher Philip Yancey wrote in his book, What's So Amazing About Grace, that there's nothing we can do to make God love us more, and there's nothing we can do to make God love us less. 
just because God just loves us. God loved us before we were here. God loves us while we're on earth, and God loves us into eternity. This is what Christian baptism is about. Baptism names us, tells us who we are, but it also tells the world who we are and who they can be, too. So baptism claims us and names us, and then baptism aims us out into the world. It tells us what we're called to do, that we're called to reach out with the good news. We're called to be more like Jesus. We're given a purpose. We're aimed in the right direction. And what direction is that? Well, in John 15, 8, Jesus told his disciples, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. We're called to serve God and to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. So after his baptism, Jesus' life took a whole new turn. And from this point on, Jesus' life was never the same. His baptism was, was basically the starting point of his public ministry here on earth. It was from this point that he began to be the Messiah in visible and physical ways. So once we're baptized, our lives take on this whole new direction, and we belong to God, and we've been washed clean. We've been made righteous in God's eyes and in God's heart. And then Jesus calls us friend, and God calls us his beloved children. How could we ever go back to where we were before? Well, we do sometimes. But every time we see a baptism, every time we're reminded of our baptism, it's our chance to start new and start again. Even infants that are baptized are then claimed as God, claimed by God, named as God's child, and aimed into the world to grow in faith and knowledge of God, to be able to take that knowledge into the world. Methodist Bishop William Willimon wrote, in baptism, we are initiated, crowned, chosen, embraced, washed, adopted, gifted, reborn, and thereby set forth and redeemed. We are identified as one of God's own and then assigned our place and our job within the kingdom of God. It seems like an awful big job description for us, but we are claimed by God. We're named by God as God's children. We're then aimed by God into the world. God hungers for us to do what serves God in the world, but also brings about personal fulfillment. God aims our lives towards that end. That's why we call it discipleship, being true disciples of Christ. How are we doing at being a true disciple of Christ? And all of, it, all of this from a little bit of water. Every baptism we perform, and especially our own, reminds us that we are claimed and aimed by God. Isaiah 49, 16, God says, See, I've written your name upon my, the palm of my hand. We are marked with a watermark of God. We belong to God. And when we stray from being what God has created to be, God comes searching for us. Not to get even, but to give us a do-over. A chance to start over. A chance to remember our baptism and be thankful. Not to get even. God claims us and names us and then aims us back into the right direction. We are called by God to be a blessing a blessing to the whole world by living a life that bears witness to the goodness of God. We've been claimed and named, and then our aim is to be witnesses in the world. We have been blessed to be blessings for others, and this morning we remember our baptism, and we are called to be thankful for our own claiming and aiming and naming. When we're baptized, we align ourselves with Jesus, and then we reach out. We reach out to others with the love that God has given us. Baptism aims us and tells us what we're called to do and who we are called to be and whose we are, that we belong to God. Are you afraid of the water? Ah, 
Come on in. The water's fine. Have you forgot the significance of your baptism? It's a statement about what we believe. It's a statement about who we belong to and what we are to be about doing. Baptism and remembering our baptism claims us, names us, and aims us into the world. So come on in, the water's fine. Amen. And now our ushers will wait upon us for our morning offering.
Oh God, we bring these gifts that you have blessed us with. Help us to aim these gifts into the world so that they see your love and can be used as a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. You join us in our closing hymn, Spirit Song. May you go into the world, God's beloved, being encouraged to be called God's beloved child. May God, our creator, Jesus, our savior, and the Holy Spirit, our comfort, and guide be with us now and always. Amen. <laughs>